And then I'm going to talk about antennas for portable, mainly QRP operations. Do you want to operate the, the yeah, sure. computer? Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm not an expert at this. I <laughs> do it occasionally. But uh, I just wanted to show you what we're talking about. So this is a full 40 meter CW station antenna. There's a little tuner in here, AA batteries, um, radio paddles, uh, two watts. I regularly work um, from my home antenna. I work uh, 20 states in two hours uh, during the uh, sprints, which I'll talk about later in the presentation. And which rig is that? It's, this is called a NorCal 40A, yeah. and, and I'll be talking about it a bit uh, in, this, in the presentation. Do they make one inexpensive like that for a silly sideband? Yes. I'll be talking about that too. Good. So QRP, most people agree it's 5 watts or less, but you see some rates that'll do 10, some 20. Um, they tend to be portable tend to be simple, uh, they don't consume much power, and they're cheap. So um, it's a really good way to have a nice small station uh, with some caveats. Um, I don't know if the, the old timers remember okay. these early QRP rigs. This one is fairly well respected even now. This is the, the Tentec Argonaut. It's a uh, 5 watt CW, uh, CWN voice. Um, you can find this on eBay and, and on uh, online, um, and uh, it was a decent rig. This one was not. <laughs> um, I remember going to the Heathkit store. I never used this one, so this is just anecdote or hearsay. I'd go to the Heathkit store. I'd look at it, kind of ooh ah ooh. Apparently, it's uh, got a super wide receiver, so you hear a lot of signals at once. Uh, and it uh, has microphonics, so you tap it, you hear, uh, you, your tapping is broadcast. Um, but it was Heathkit's first venture into Second this. Versus, well, what was their first? I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is. So I had heard the same thing about this. Yeah. Our state fellow over in Greenwich had a box for one of these, and as we were kind of salivating, I commented, oh God, you might get 20 bucks for it if we get by. You know? um, and then, I don't know if you guys remember this, the, the Tuna Tin 2. Yeah. This is a, a transmitter only, it's CW only, it's got very, very few components. It was published in QST, uh, obviously in 77. And, and that was uh, like the cover for that. Yeah, that was a very, it was very popular, lots of them are, are still being made, you can still buy kits for this. Hmm. Um, they had a recent one in QST a few months back using solid state, same basic. Well, this is solid state. There's no tubes here. You're talking about like uh, surface mount kind of stuff or transistors? I don't remember quite frankly. It was, it was a newer version of the old tuna. Yeah, there are variations of this. Um, crystal control, which I'll talk about later. Uh, I want to put in a message for CW. Uh, most QRP rigs. Uh, work on CW and only. Um, people can hear you better. You, you don't have to yell as loud. Um, and technicians can operate CW on three bands without upgrading uh, on HF frequencies. Also, um, if you do upgrade to general or higher, you have access to the 30 meter band, which is a low power band. There, there's a 150 watt limit on it. It's all CW or digital. Um, there's no contesting on it, so it, it's a, it tends to be a lot of DX and a lot of uh, just kind of leisurely operations. Um, I like 30 meters, it, it's, it's really a nice band. Um, another aspect of uh, QRP is uh, a lot of the rigs tend to come as kits. And uh, kits are cheap. They're great learning opportunities, and um, I found in doing the research for this presentation that most of the really interesting radios were kits. And that is a Elcraft K1 in the, in the corner there. That is still a kit. Um, you might see QRP rigs that run on crystals or that, that are tuned with crystals. 
someone said it's like fishing without bait. <laughs> you are, when you, and I'll talk about this later, when, when you are um, operating QRP, people tend not to hear you, so they don't hear your, your CQs very well. You really have to find them and pounce on them. Um, crystals don't allow that. So you're really kind of sitting in the middle of a band with a very weak signal uh, calling CQ. People tend not to hear you. Uh, luckily, most rigs now uh, have direct digital synthesis or um, uh, some kind of an analog VFO. Um, and crystals are hard to get anyway. And um, the, the rigs that do come with crystals tend now to come with one fixed crystal that's soldered in. You don't see the um, socketed crystals anymore. So yeah, as I said, search and pounce beats CQ. You, you want to find someone, someone loud, um, so they're more likely to hear you and call them. Antennas are always great. Um, there are designated frequencies for QRP calling that people congregate on. Uh, so use those if you are calling CQ. Uh, slow down your CW if you're using CW so that people can understand your weaker signal and have patience. It's not really armchair operating often. Um, at home, uh, a QRP station will fit into a little cabinet. Uh, very easy to hide. Uh, RFI is not a problem because you're using low power. Antennas can be stealthier. Um, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's a it's not the easiest way to operate at home, but some people enjoy the challenge. But outdoor operation is what uh, you do best with QRP, and um, if you live in a house where the homeowner association doesn't allow antennas, it's a good way to, to get out and operate and you can carry the station with you in a little bag. And backpacking is, is really the, uh, the killer app for um, QRP operation. Uh, rigs that are designed for backpacking will have really low power drain because you'll be out there for a few days. They're lightweight because you want to uh, have to carry heavy batteries, which you do have to carry. Um, there's a new trend uh, in QRP radios called trail-friendly radios. These are radios, and I'll show you a few later, that have controls on the top surface rather than the front surface, and uh, connections along the back. Um, and uh, when you put antennas up, and I think John will address this, you have to be careful. Uh, slingshots are not very welcome in uh, public parks. Um, bows and arrows definitely are not going to be welcome. Fishing <laughs> rods are an issue if you uh, have a, an antenna mounted on a fishing rod. Uh, and you're carrying a fishing rod around visibly, you can be ticketed for having a fishing rod if you don't have a fishing license. <laughs> if it's a place where there's fishing, obviously yes. where he is. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> not likely to be uh, a, a lake around here. Um, and I came across this. This uh, this is a sideband rig, uh, 75 meters. Uh, 70, yeah, 75 meters. It's small, weighs less than a pound. Um, and the, the, on the page which sells this, there is uh, an anecdote about the guy, one of the guys who designed it, who uh, used it on backcountry backpacking trips to make uh, close-in contacts, and he kept in touch with. Uh, a net about 200 miles away. So if he had a problem, he'd just string a, a dive pole up at five feet, shoot a 75 meter signal up to the sky, and it would bounce right back down. What kind of pricing on it? Like this was, uh, this is actually, the kit is I think 125 without the display. Mm -hmm. um, so you're kind of guessing where you are frequency wise. Right. What's the power of it? Uh, I think it's two watts or five watts. Does it come in camo? 
<laughs> With a can of spray paint? Sure. Yeah, I, was say, the say. Um, I think it's 175 with a display. So you have to carry a microphone, of course, and a separate battery pack right. with this, and an antenna. So it's not just the radio. Um, some QRP stars. This is, this is a guy I admire. He is the founder of the NAQCC, the North American uh, QRP CW Club. I am a big participant in this. Um, he's been doing this since 1994. He only does QRP. He does it from his house. He has bad antennas. Uh, he does one QRP QSO a day since uh, 1994. Unbroken streak. Um, and you can see the list of awards he has. This guy is just a powerhouse. I don't know if you've read about this guy. <laughs> WG0AT. Yeah. He has pet goats. He goes hiking with them. Uh, he climbs mountains with them. And they carry his uh, equipment. And he uh, does a lot of portable operation, backcountry operation. That was a good order. Kayak mobile. Yeah. Yeah, there was, there was an article about it. Yeah, yeah he's, he's a character. Um, there's also a, a class of QRP called QRPP, um, less than a watt. This, this little rig which I found on the web is 150 milliwatts. It's a transceiver. You can see the paper clip next to it for a size uh, comparison. Um, I, on my home rig, which is a 100 watt rig, I can dial it down to sub watt level. So at 900 milliwatts, during one of these um, NAQCC contests that we do, I worked eight states in 45 minutes, 900 milliwatts. Mm. Um, What's the frequency control on that? It's fixed, it's a crystal. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you're, you're, uh, you've got to be very patient with this kind of a rig. Um, there's awards to be had. Uh, the NAQCC sprints, it's once a month. Um, there's one next Tuesday night. Um, they are low speed CW. Um, three bands. You try to talk to as many uh, other members as you can. Um, you log it. You send the log in. You get a nice uh, JPEG certificate if uh, you place. Uh, and I do this almost every month. I regularly work um, 20 to 30 states. No, 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 not 30. 20 to 25 states in two hours with five months. Um, there are other clubs as well. Uh, they, they all kind of tend towards QRP. Um, Summits on the Air uh, aims to activate mountaintops. Um, you don't want to carry a very heavy, powerful rig up to a mountaintop. So if QRP is a natural for that. And I, I have not done that, but it looks interesting. I might, I might be doing that in the future. And then there's the 1,000 the miles per watt award. Uh, you try to work at least 1,000 miles per watt. I have done this. Um, with that little blue rig, I worked recently uh, Italy, Ireland, and Czech, Czech Republic. In a day. What band? It was 40. That's a 40 meter ring. So here's uh, kind of what's out there. It's a, it's a little survey of, of rigs. Um, these, this is about the cheapest usable thing that I found. Uh, these are $20 a piece. And they're kits. So they're bare bones of 40, 40 meters, 2 watts. You do need stuff around it like a, a transmit receive switch um, but this will get you on the air and uh, I believe it has a, a VXO variable crystal oscillator so you can shift the frequency on this um, so this is the radio that I've got here um, it's 2 watts 40 meters it's got a really really sharp uh, CW filter on it and there's a book written about this radio. It's a textbook. Radio. 
I'm sorry? It's bigger than the radio. Yes, it is. It's, it's bigger than the radio. More too, right? It's more complicated than the radio. Um, but is that would, a kit? Or is that a... It's a kit. Well, I should say it was a kit. Yeah. So the guy who builds these, it, it's built on a known plan. Uh, but the guy who's, who's provided the kits seems to be uh, getting out of the business. I just just in the last month, he's suddenly out of stock, and people are starting to ask about this on um, eham.net. They're, they're looking for used ones, so I think he's he's out of the business. Um, but this he's is having medical problems. He might be having medical yeah. problems. Uh, I mean, he, but he's been he has other rigs as well, other uh, QRP rigs, that, kits that he sold, uh, which have been out of stock for a while. This, uh, I mean, he'll still take orders for whatever he's got in stock, yeah, I mean, but there's nothing, this, this rig is out of stock. Just a quick interjection. Yeah. The uh, company, or the gentleman that designed the tennis ball cans, that's also a NorCal project. Oh, okay. He basically privatized on his own. This but is Alan, Alan Biat. Yeah, Biad. So he's a prominent NorCal guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He does CW, uh, CWQRP as well, as far as I know. So again, yeah, NorCal, uh, Northern California QRP Club, I think is the full name. A lot of good stuff comes out of them. They, they, they have a lot of smart guys. Uh, the guys who founded Ellacraft, Wayne uh, Burdick and Eric Swartz, are out of NorCal. Um, Andy? Yeah. Uh, a lot of the QRP rigs, uh, particularly the kits, uh, usually are mono, ba mono bands. Uh, usually. Yes. Uh, what are the most frequently used bands in terms of QRP? It depends. Um, I mean, if, if you were going to do daytime operation outdoors, I would go with 20 meters. Okay. Because that's going to have the best. I mean, it's, it's the band where you're going to hear the most people and you're going to be able to work during the day. For like an all around radio, I would choose 40. Um, but 40 meter antennas can be hard to get into trees. Um, as I discovered with this wire, I tried to shoot the wire directly into a tree with uh, a slingshot, and I couldn't, with the wire alone and a fishing weight, I couldn't get high enough. I usually use a wire, a fishing weight and a fishing line, a light fishing line. <coughs> I didn't this time. So if you're out in the woods, it's going to be hard to get this into a tree, 40 meter antenna into a tree. Um, 80 meters or 75 meters. You saw the use case for that. That's great for close-in stuff. Seems to be a lot of 40 meter rigs available. 40 meter, I mean, it's, it's a really good all-around band. I mean, on field day, that's the band we always make the most contacts on. It's just good day and night. This, this radio, I, I have never touched it or seen it, but everyone seems to love it. Um, I believe it's, it is a kit. And, uh, this is this says single band, but but I really should have said it, it's available in multiple individual bands, so you can pick a band that you want to build this in. And five watts is a very decent power level. MFJ, I mean they must have 50 different radios. Um, I'm sure they're fine. This is two. I think that's the one. The one left the cub? Yeah, I could be wrong. That, that, the, that's about their most bare bones rig, it seems. Um, that one on the left is two watts, one on the right is four watts. They have trail friendly type radios. Uh, I mean, I, I, I could have filled the screen up with their stock. They, they've got everything. Yeah, but the mighty fine junk are not kits, they are pre built. They are pre built, yeah. Oh, actually, no, they do have kits. Some of them are kits. Oh, okay. I didn't really Option. It's, it's not, not always required. So that's low end. Then we have the mid-range stuff. This is interesting. There's a, a ham KD1JV, Steve Weber, who um, designs really interesting small radios. And this is one of his radios. This is the size of a deck of cards. Hmm. You can't really tell from the picture. Uh, it's three bands, two watts. Uh, the only thing that's missing is an antenna tuner, but uh, you, the antenna plugs in here, uh, power here, key, phones, there's a little display that you can switch on and off, controls, band switches. 
Uh, are those up there in Arizona? Are those the uh, um, VFO? Yeah, the VFO. So there, there's, because there's so few controls and, and really nothing to turn on the radio, he's got uh, some workarounds or compromises to, to change frequency. So it, it changes frequency 50 hertz at a time when you press those buttons individually. When you hold them down, it scans up much faster, but okay. not fast enough so that you miss signals. How much for this one do you have? 259. And it's not always in stock. This is the one I want. <laughs> um, so this is actually this one and this one, these are trail friendly rigs. You can set them down on the ground or on your lap. The controls are right up on top and the connections are out the back. Um, this one is a much more complete radio than, than the one you just saw. Uh, this all, uh, all built out with all the accessories is a bit north of $500, and it's a kit. Um, but it does everything. It's got tuner, auto tuner, internal batteries. Um, it's got the paddles if you want. Uh, it has turning dials, which is very handy. And um, it's supposedly a very, very nice receiver. So that, that's on my uh, wish list. And then this is uh, the start of the high-end category. Now, this guy, I borrowed Georgie's. Um, this is what people say is the best QRP radio uh, made right now. It is sideband, CW, all mode, AM, uh, up to 12 watts. It's got little uh, legs, so you can tip it up. Uh, mm -hmm. It is a really a full radio. The only thing this is missing is power. It only does that 12 watts. Everything else, there's no compromise. Um, I did some nice CW contacts with this last week uh, to Europe, and there were no issues. I mean, people had a little trouble hearing me because I was weak, but uh, I had no trouble hearing that. It's a great receiver. Did you just buy one yourself, or what? No, this is George's. But George's, I'm sorry. What does Excellent. this one go for? Uh, <laughs> a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think fully tricked out fifteen hundred. As a kit or as a no. kit? You can buy it as a kit. You only save you about a hundred bucks. It's it's that not worth it. You're not soldering, you know, through hole soldering or or surface mount. It's more like take this board, screw it down. That that kind of a kit. Essentially, this thing is the front end of the K3. Yeah. It's the K3 without the amplifier. Gotcha. Yeah. That's, that's all it is. <laughs> I have the K3 also, and this is not much. I mean, this, it's about the same uh, quality of, of operation. And you can add the amplifier to it. Yeah, there's a hunt, they sell yeah. a 100 watt amplifier for a, a, a godly amount of money, but um, once you put that on, you've got. K3, K3. That, and you could detach the little head and you know throw it in your luggage yeah. and take it with you. Oh, there's batteries in that too, by the way. You saw that, that uh, I was able to turn it off. Then we have some old standards. Uh, Yezu has uh, a couple of um, QRP class rigs. This one is unusual in that it does HF 6 meters, 2 meters, and 70 centimeters. Um, so you could probably could do satellite work on this one. Um, I've never used it. Some people like it. It's expensive. It's got internal batteries. Uh, ICOM has a similar radio. A little more powerful. No, uh, no VHF or UHF. And then uh, Tentec. They're, they're at Argonaut from 1972. This is the latest incarnation. I don't know if any of you know, but Tentec's kind of on the skids. Yeah. They're, uh, yeah. You go to their website, there's an explanation. It's been bought, and the guy is uh, is uh, working to uh, get it back in operation. I hope it does uh, come back, because they were really interesting radios. Um, but this one's cool. It, it's a, um, I don't think it's a software-defined radio, but it's got 
digital signal processing, um, it's one of these radios where you can update the, the firmware and it will change the function of the radio and, and improve things. Uh, they were around. And uh, we're seeing uh, a kind of Balfung effect <laughs> now on HF QRP rigs. Um, unfortunately, the Balfung price point isn't really happening. These are they're not as cheap as I would like to see. Um, I, again, I don't have direct experience with any of these radios. The one on the lower left, people really seem to like. Um, they have documentation issues. They have firmware issues. Um, but they're going to get better. Uh, they're good, probably going to get cheaper. Not not as cheap as Baofeng handhelds, but I would imagine cheap. And then there's some really bizarro radios. This is a transmitter. It has 14 components. You can build it in a half hour. The inductors are the spirals on the uh, circuit board. <laughs> this is a 5 watt radio. Crystal control. Um, Unfortunately, it's out of production. I would really like to have built one of these just to, to show it around. It's, it's a pretty unusual radio. And then this, uh, this is a transceiver, 200 milliwatt transceiver. And, and you can buy this. It's, uh, I think it's $10. It's a kit. Uh, this is a kit. Like I said, you know, these, these guys go out of business. They, they will make a rig for a few years and then they'll get tired or they'll find it's not making money and they stop making them. So if you see something you like, get it. And at QRP we say 72 instead of 73. Because <laughs> it's, it's lower power. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. Uh, I've attended a lot of the QRP sessions out of Dayton when I, I did it, and, and it goes back almost to the days when they first started, and it was a group over in England called Panga, uh, and they made, they made a lot of kits, and the first kit they made was called a one -er. It was one inch square, cube, and I've got the kit. Oh, you did? I haven't really? built it yet, but I still got oh. the thing. <laughs> but then they started really? making, you know, little odds and ends that would attach to it and right. stuff. So, right. so it's a whole bunch of little tiny things that you can yeah. just kind of stick Wonder. together. And, and it was kind of fun. Uh, the, one of the most interesting sessions was a, a, a guy who hiked the Appalachian Trail. And yes. He um, three hundred zero. I know this guy. I, I I haven't met him, but I read his book. He I wrote got, a book. Yeah, I've got I got an autographed copy of. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I read the book to, to Kathy, <laughs> who was hiking the trail at the time, and uh, he told a very it, it, wherever he stopped, he'd just throw something up in a tree yeah. and he'd talk all over. Uh, and so it was a very interesting talk. But one of the most interesting things that he had, he was up on Bear Mountain, which is just across the Hudson. And he was out in the woods and um, doing his u usual thing, but he decided to take a, he, it, it was, he had a, a facility to, to take, a, take a shower, uh, which is how he traveled. And so he was in the woods and he was taking a shower and then a bunch, of, uh, all of a sudden there was some rustling in the bushes and it was bears. Now, he knows from experience that if there's a bear around, you make a lot of noise and scare them away. What he didn't realize that he was only a short distance away from the parking lot where a whole busload of Oriental people were coming up to get the view from the top of the bear. <laughs> so he's out in the woods, stark naked, screaming at the bear, and all these people are just looking at him and watching. <laughs> American Red Wolves. <laughs> they were all snatching pictures. You know, we like, one of the bears. We're in Japan, there's a slideshow going on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was his most interesting experience on the trail. <laughs> I, I read his 